All right, so now what we want to do uh, is start to look at uh, how enzymes are working um, and things that affect and control, regulate uh, how enzymes work. So the first thing we're going to look at here um, are some terms that are related to uh, what's called enzyme kinetics. All right, so enzyme kinetics. And with enzyme kinetics, what we want to consider uh, is now something that we're going to refer to as the, the rate of reaction. The rate of reaction. All right, so the rate of reaction has to have some type of unit, uh, and that is going to be the unit is going to be product per unit time. All right, so this is really generic. Okay, so the product could be uh, then in a concentration, uh, say moles of a particular molecule uh, produced per second. Right, so that's product per time. Uh, and you could have different units of time and different concentrations uh, that you use for the product, um, but, but that's the idea. It's, it's how much product is made in a certain amount of time. That's the rate of a reaction. Now, what's going to happen is for a reaction, or as typically a reaction occurs, this is in the presence of an enzyme. So this is obviously we're talking about enzymes here. Uh, if you were to add, well, this is going to be substrate concentration. If you were to add more substrate molecules, so those are the reactant molecules, what you're going to see is that the rate of reaction is going to increase. And that's not anything that you wouldn't necessarily expect. So for example, let's say I have these two chambers, which could represent, say, cells. But in this case, we're just kind of making this up. And in each of them, there's an enzyme. Let's say this is the enzyme here. Here's the enzyme here. They fit these very specific little substrate molecules. Now, the question might be, if to this one, I add in more substrate molecules, And this one just stays like this. You have one substrate molecule, one enzyme. And the question is, in which of these would you expect to see the product first? Would it be maybe the exact same time? Or do you think one might form the product before the other? If we want to think about it a different way, you could think uh, if you were in a, a large, large room and there was one other person and you were both blindfolded and you were walking in the room and we were going to see how long it would take for you to bump into one another. Okay. Versus you were in a room blindfolded and there were 50 other people. And it's the same size room. And we're going to time how long until you bump into someone. So it's going to be a lot more likely you're going to bump into someone if there are a lot more people there. So the more molecules in a cell, in a solution, the more likely those molecules are going to bump into each other or interact. When an enzyme and substrate interact with each other, it, it's two molecules bumping into one another. It's, it's somewhat randomly happening in the cell. There are other factors that affect how likely it is to occur, which we'll talk about soon, um, specifically here with this Km value. But um, they, these are um, based on molecular interactions, which is going to be based on concentration uh, dependent. So the more substrates available, the more likely the reaction will occur. So this is now also in this example we're um, just like here, we, we're assuming a fixed enzyme concentration. So here I drew one, one enzyme in each of them. You know, so if we had more enzymes in one, then this one would go faster. If we had more enzymes in the other, then potentially that, that might go faster for a short time. So that, that, that's a whole nother thing to consider. We're not considering that. We're considering just a fixed amount of enzyme but we're changing the amount of substrate. So we're adding substrate, adding substrate, adding substrate. And the more substrate you add, the more likely that they'll interact with one another. So the, more, the faster and faster the reaction will go. But the thing is, what's going to happen is this curve isn't just going to keep going up. Eventually, it's just going to level off like this. And so first off, we try to address 
why that happens, and then we'll, we'll, we're going to add some, well, maybe we'll add the terms to it first, and then we'll, we'll address why that happens. So the terms that kind of relate to this. Uh, here, this point where they leveled off, if we follow it over to this rate axis, we'll refer to that as the Vmax. So V stands for velocity, which is here, the rate. It's the speed of the reaction. It's how fast it's actually occurring. And so this is the maximum, V max, maximum rate of reaction uh, for this particular enzyme and substrate. So it's just it's as, as fast as they can go um, at that fixed enzyme concentration. You're producing the most product per second, most product per millisecond, whatever the unit you have is um, with a particular substrate concentration. So what we find is that there is a substrate concentration where it kind of levels off. It's this this. You hit this point, and if you keep adding more, it just doesn't go any faster. So why? Why would that occur? Well, the thing is, the enzyme will bind the substrate. So remember, there's going to be temporary binding temporary hydrogen bonding uh, at the active site. The enzyme changes shape, facilitates the transition state, bonds break, bonds form, releases the product. So now let's just pretend the, the product here, you know, then gets shot out. That's our little product. Well, the thing is, there's a period of time where the enzyme and substrate are together. As soon as it releases the product, if there's another substrate available, that substrate can enter the into the active site. If there's no substrate available, then, then nothing happens, and the reaction's very slow. You're like, where, where's the next substrate? I don't know. There's no substrates around. But you add more substrates, and then there's another one available. There's another one available. There's another one available every second. But the thing is, it can only work so fast. You know, If you were in a contest you know, eating cookies, um, and I gave you one cookie every minute, you could eat it. If I gave you one cookie every 30 seconds, you probably could eat that. But there would become a point where if you started handing you cookies, you know, 50 cookies all at once, uh, you couldn't eat those in just five seconds. It would just be too much. It's too many. You would become what we call saturated. And this is your, this is the saturation point. For the enzyme. The enzyme is saturated with the substrate. So as soon as it binds the substrate, then re the reaction occurs, it releases the product. And as soon as it releases it, a new substrate's there. If you keep adding more substrate, you can't make that enzyme work faster. It, it's working as fast as it can work. And by adding extra substrate molecules, making more available, nothing can be done. All right. So before that point, you can keep producing more product. Technically, the enzyme's always going to bind and release in the same amount of speed, whether there's just one substrate molecule or 50 or, or 1,000. But it'll see, more product will be formed because there's more uh, interactions per second you know, occurring between enzyme and substrate. Now, there's something else we get out of this graph, which is interesting. And it's, it's what's related to several other things that we're going to talk about when we talk about regulation. If we look at a point that's halfway down, come over to the line, and then come down again. This point here. That point is, so it's on this axis, is the substrate concentration at 1 half V max. And that's called the Km. It's a Michaelis-Menten constant. And that's something else that's something a little more advanced. As uh, so we talk about enzyme kinetics in a little more advanced class, you would go more into the um, kinetics of it. We're just introducing the terms, OK? And so you can read a graph, find the points on the graph, label the graph. That's the sort of thing that we're, we're looking for you to do. So um, this is the definition of Km. And you should be able to define it and find it on the graph. But the next question would be, um, what does it mean? So, you know, who who cares? Well, KM is also a measure, if we can use it to compare enzymes and how they work, uh, a measure of affinity. Affinity. 
What is affinity? It is uh, how much the enzyme and substrate like each other. It's kind of what an affinity means, but it's really an attraction between the enzyme and the substrate. It's sort of the pull that the enzyme might have on the substrate molecule. So we said there's hydrogen bonding. So there's polarity, there's charge at that active site. So if that active site has accessibility and proper available charges, it can, like a magnet, pull the substrate right into the active site if it has a good KM value. All right, so what's a good KM value? Well, a good KM value is going to be a small KM value. The, the less substrate it takes to get the reaction going fast, the better. So here we'll compare here two, two graphs. So let's say we have um, this one, and I'll use the yellow here. Whoop. Let's say the second one. And let's say we'll just kind of go up like that. So for, with both of these graphs, I, what I'm trying to do is show uh, the same Vmax. Okay, so this is, say, enzyme one, and this is enzyme two. So two enzymes, let's say there are two enzymes that do the same reaction even we're studying, and they can both do this reaction. What we're going to find, though, is now for this one, for enzyme one, right? If we go at one half Vmax, same Vmax, follow it over to that line, then we come down to the substrate concentration. That's the Km, right, for enzyme two. This is the Km, right, for enzyme one over here. So this number is going to be bigger. This number is going to be smaller. The smaller Km has a higher affinity. Okay, hopefully this makes sense. So the idea here is if it doesn't take much substrate to still go at the same speed. So that would be like essentially if these were the two enzymes. So let's say maybe this is enzyme two, you know, and this is enzyme one. Maybe with very few substrate molecules, the rate of these are actually equal. So how much product is coming out might be exactly the same per second, even though there's very few substrate molecules in here. Why would that be? How could that be? That could be because this particular enzyme is more attracted to the substrate molecule. Maybe this one over here, the substrate bumps into the enzyme. It doesn't even, it doesn't even hardly recognize it. You know, so it has to fit in just at the right, right way in, in the active site in order for it to work, in order for the reaction to occur. Some enzymes have very low Km values. Some enzymes have very high Km values. So um, one of the most abundant proteins on the planet. We'll get to this later in the course. Uh, we talk about um, uh, photosynthesis. Uh, it's an enzyme called Rubisco. It stands for rivulose bisphosphate carboxylase, something we'll get into later. So it's a protein. It's an enzyme. It's an enzyme that's involved in, uh, the, in the chloroplast of a plant cell. It's what binds carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, brings carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere into the chloroplast, and then is feeds it into the um, the processes of photosynthesis that will then produce the um, Calvin Benson cycle, uh, the G3P molecules that could be used to eventually build build sugars. Right. So this binds carbon dioxide. It's incredibly abundant on Earth. It's not just abundant because there are a lot of plants and there are a lot of chloroplast. It's also abundant because it has a pretty high Km value. So its ability to bind isn't that good. Right, so we need a this plant cells. They need a lot of copies of this particular protein, in or this particular enzyme, in order to get the reactions going faster. So we're talking about here a fixed enzyme concentration. Another way of altering the rate of a reaction would be add more enzymes. That's not what we're getting into now. That's not what these terms refer to. But it's something that you know could be that cells, living cells, can then make more copies of proteins. And then those proteins increase the enzyme concentration, which can then shift it. So again, that's a 
separate sort of thing, but there are all these factors. Here we're looking at with one fixed enzyme concentration, if we're going to compare the action of those enzymes, we can alter the substrate concentration and see how that affects the enzymes. And if the reaction goes faster, this is what we would expect. Uh, if it stops going faster, we've hit the saturation point. That rate would be called the Vmax. Half the rate, the substrate concentration, whatever it was at half that rate, uh, is called the Km. So then that Km is a measure of our affinity of how attracted enzyme and substrate are for one another. And in this way, we can compare two enzymes or three enzymes or a number of enzymes to one another by uh, that Km value. The, so the lower the Km value, the smaller the Km value, essentially say is better. All right, that means the substrate and enzyme bind together better. They're more attracted to each other. Big or higher Km values uh, are not. And you really, if I just gave you a Km value, it would be meaningless. Uh, you'd have to see two next to one another to say which one has the higher affinity for the enzyme. And that would be the smaller number. So hopefully um, this makes sense. All right, and now you have the first couple um, terms. We're going to come back to this graph as we talk about some of these other things. But for a minute, we're going to go uh, over to look at um, enzymes uh, and another type of binding site they have called an allosteric site. And so that's what we're going to do next.